Let's sing our gathering hymn, Christ Be Our Light, number 715, verses 1, 2, and 5. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light, shine in your church. Gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ, be our light. Shine in Shine through the darkness, Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong, let us be servants to one another. Signs of your kingdom come. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts. Shine through the darkness. Christ, be our light. Shine in your church. Gather God has promised that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Therefore, let us call upon the Lord, confessing our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy One, we believe we are called to see the face of Christ in all, but we confess we often refuse to see Christ in some. For holding on to resentments, for calling another enemy, for allowing the color of one's skin to influence us, for negating the other names by which you are called, for seeing borders as fences and not invitations to exploration, for not living the truth that the whole world is in your hands. Lord, have mercy and hear our silent prayer. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us often to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us take a moment to share that peace with one another. Peace all on Zoom.
Our reading today is from Exodus 4, verses 18 to 26, concerning Zipporah. Then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. Jethro said, Go, and I wish you well. Now the Lord had said to Moses in Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all those who wanted to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. And he took the staff of God in his hand. The Lord said to Moses, When you return to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders I have given you the power to do. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then said, say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son, and I told you, let my son go so he may worship me. But you refuse to let him go, so I will kill your firstborn son. At a lodging place on the way, the Lord met Moses and was about to kill him. But Zipporah took a flint knife, cut off his son's foreskin, and cut Moses' feet with it. Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, she said. So the Lord let him alone. At that time, she said, bridegroom of blood, referring to circumcision. The word of the Lord. All right, I'd like to invite the children up. <clears throat> okay, you're not alone, Dolly is coming. All right, so girls, we are going to go back to school. So we're going to be in Miss Swanson's class. Yeah, it's official. Good morning, class. How are you today? Good morning. How are you doing? Before oh. we start our class, before we start our bloody rules, I'm going to collect your homework. <laughs> The dog ate my homework. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. All right, so have you ever made an excuse like that for not doing your homework? You don't know, okay. Have you ever made an excuse to not clean your room? Yeah, yeah. okay. Probably, yeah, it happens. In our story today, Moses is coming back and he is called by God to go back to Egypt and set uh, the people free from Pharaoh. And he wants to do it, but he has some doubts and worries. And so I think some excuses come into play. And really what God is saying is that it's okay if you have excuses. He gave us his son so that when we have those doubts and worries, we can turn to Jesus and lay them all at his feet so that we can obey God and uh, listen to his call. So let's pray. So don't make excuses to not clean your room. You will? <laughs> to, then you just tell mom, like, Miss Danielle says it's okay as long as I talk to Jesus and we pray to Jesus. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for knowing that we want to obey and for knowing that we have doubts and worries. Thank you also for your son, that when we have those worries, we can pray to Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. So anybody else think this is one of the weirder stories you've heard <laughs> on a Sunday morning out of the Bible, right? So let's back up and give ourselves a quick recap on Moses' life, okay? Moses, if you remember, was born during the time when the people were slaves in Egypt. And the king of Egypt and his advisors were nervous 
because the Israelites were growing in number. No matter what they did, they just more and more Israelites were there all the time, and they were afraid that they might get too strong and they might overtake them. Not necessarily an unfounded fear, right? The problem was that to ease their fears, the king of Egypt, the pharaoh and his advisors, ordered all the people to throw all the baby boys into the Nile. Thankfully, Moses' mother did not listen. She hid him for three months, and then she put him in a basket and floated him down the Nile, where he floated right in front of the Pharaoh's daughter, who was bathing in the Nile. Well, she's not a good listener either. She decided to keep Moses and to raise him as her son. So he grew up as an Egyptian. But one day Moses saw one of the Egyptian guards beating one of the Israelite slaves and he was so inflamed with anger that he reached out and killed that guard. Well, as you can guess, that did not go over with his adopted Pharaoh father. So Moses fled into the wilderness of Midian and he sat down by a well. Probably some of that story is familiar, maybe if you attended Sunday school. This next part might not be. The priest of Midian had seven daughters, and it was their job to take the flock down to the watering hole. Well, when they came to draw water on the day that Moses was sitting at the well, some shepherd bullies were there, and they were trying to drive away all these sisters and their animals so that they couldn't water them. Well, Moses stood up and came to their rescue so that they could fulfill their duty and water the flock. They went back to tell their dad, and their dad said, where is this young man? And uh, his name was Jethro. He was the Midianite priest, and he gave Zipporah, his daughter, to Moses in marriage as a thank you for saving them. And Moses lived with Jethro and Zipporah and the rest of her family for a long period, the Bible says. And then one day, Moses spoke God spoke to Moses through the burning bush and told him to go back to Egypt to free the people out of slavery. And it's on their way back to Egypt that we come across this strange little story, right? It's just this little blip, really, almost, in the wider arc of this story of God saving God's people, of God freeing them and bringing them into a new day, right? And It's one that we usually skip over because it's so strange and so out of place. What is happening here? After all, why would the Lord rise up against Moses right after telling him he'd been chosen for such an important moment in Israel's history? The text doesn't really answer that, not directly at least, but it does tell us who saves the day. We don't know if some terrible sickness came upon Moses or if Zipporah was just faster at sorting out what was happening and so was able to save Moses from the Lord's anger. But there she is. This woman who likely only knows what Moses has told her about this God that the Israelites worship, yet she is the one who puts two and two together, right? Moses, on his way to lead God's people, has neglected the covenant between God and God's people, which is sealed with circumcision. Zipporah is the one who connects the dots and moves swiftly to remedy the situation by circumcising their oldest son and laying the mark of that covenant at Moses' feet. Amazing, isn't it? Zipporah only appears three times in Scripture at the well, When Moses rescues she and her sisters, here in our story, and a little bit later, she shows up again with she and her father-in-law, her sons. They come out to the desert to meet Moses after he has freed the people. Three times. Three little moments. And only one line in all of Scripture. Here in our story, she says, Surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me. And yet that one line... And this one appearance where she is the main actor in the story is vitally important because it's Zipporah who reminds Moses of his identity 
as one of God's people. Right? When, Moses, when Zipporah and her sisters spotted Moses at the well that first time, they thought he was an Egyptian. He was dressed like an Egyptian. He spoke like an Egyptian. All of his mannerisms and customs, the food he liked and didn't like, all right, it was all shaped by his Egyptian upbringing. Everything about him was Egyptian except for one thing. He was circumcised. And circumcision was that sign that God commanded Abraham and his descendants to wear a seal of the covenant relationship between them and God. Now Zipporah had borne two sons to Moses, but he had failed to circumcise them. Egypt had caused Moses to forget his roots, his identity as a descendant of Abraham and a follower of the one true God. And in order to complete his assignment, Moses had to die. At least the Egyptian in him had to die. In order for him to lead the people out of Egypt and back to God, Moses first had to finally be free of Egypt himself. He had to be rooted and grounded in his identity as God's child, as God's agent, with God at the center. And through Zipporah's quick-thinking actions, she evoked that covenant by demonstration so that Moses would remember his ruts. The flesh and blood in the hands of his wife Zipporah was not going to let Moses forget. Right? We all need a Zipporah in our life at times, don't we? Someone to call us back to who we really are, and to call us forward, right? To our true identity, to our purpose, to our true direction when we are getting off course a little. And I find it interesting that it isn't something big in Moses' life that has him forgetting who he is. Remember, he's been with Zipporah and her family for a long period, the Bible says. And it's during this ordinary time in Moses' life that he slides away from his truest identity as God's child. And so it is this reminder that he needs. You know, it's not a, hey, you better get your life together or else reminder, is it? No, it's a, hey, remember who you are and whose you are as you head into this moment in your life. Remember that God's got you. That God has this moment cradled firmly in God's hands. Remember that God is the driver and not you. And thank goodness, I've seen how some of you drive. Right? God is the one who's to be in the driver's seat leading the way and not us. Remember that this is God's call on your heart, and that God will be faithful to you and to that calling. Whether that is a, a call to ministry, to wear the fun collar, whether that is a call to parenthood, whether that's a call to witness to your faith in a particular moment, or to free a whole people from slavery. And then also ask yourself, is there something in me that needs to die? Is there something around me that I need to let go of? Right? Something, someone, some piece deep in my heart that's making remembering who I am and whose I am a little bit difficult. Maybe even a little difficult to believe. Right? God's got me. God wants to use me for something special. I don't know about that, right? Moses and all of his excuses. Well, I'm not a good speaker. I'm shy. I don't like people. All the things. We don't know what all Moses' excuses were. We just know they were plentiful. But look at him. He lays out all the reasons God shouldn't want to use him for this incredible leadership role, and God says, forget about it. Right? I choose you. 
you're going to be fine because I've got this. Philippians 3.20, Paul reminds us that our citizenship is not here. It is in heaven. And our identity is hidden in Christ in the deepest places in our hearts. As we reflect on Zipporah's witness, may we remember who we are in Christ. May we die to all our false identities and live only in the true identity as siblings of the flesh and blood of the bridegroom. Amen? Amen. Join me in our statement of belief 
found in your bulletins. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give thanks for Zipporah and pray that through her witness, we would remember who we are and whose we are, your children, marked with the cross of Christ and sealed with the Holy Spirit forever. Embolden us to let go of anything that keeps us from knowing ourselves as anything less than your beloved. Lord, in your mercy, creative God, we pray for the earth. Keep watch over those who rescue people, land, and animals in danger from weather and loss of ecosystems that nurture and provide shelter. Repair scorched and drowned landscapes and communities, homes, and lives. Fill us with the desire to be good stewards of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, we pray for the nations of the world, for governments, leaders, and citizens. We pray especially today for Israel and Palestine, for Ukraine and Russia, and all countries at war. Watch over those who pay the price for these wars. Be near to refugees and immigrants. Inspire us to welcome them with glad hearts when they arrive on our shores and in our neighborhoods. Lord, in your mercy. For this congregation, as we gather on Zoom and on Century Avenue, bless these spaces with your presence. Into your wide embrace, hold all who mourn. Lay your healing hand upon all those who are sick and hurting. We lift to you especially those suffering from COVID and all those who have been exposed to COVID. We pray for Lydia's cousin, Lisa, and her mother, Naomi. Grant them your mercy and grace. We pay, pray for Dallas as he goes into surgery tomorrow. Bless his medical team and grant him healing. We pray for Danielle's brother, Chris, as he continues to battle cancer. Grant him wisdom, discernment, and peace. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for Sue's successful surgery and prayers for continued healing for her. And finally, bless Sean and Jen as they celebrate their 15 years of marriage. Give to all of us your rest, healing, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, be with us now in this holy meal, that it might remind us that we are never alone, that you are always coming quickly to our side, sitting with us in the pain, 
and drawing us together as a community of grace. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we come to God's table at God's command and at God's invitation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together through the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. For those joining us at God's table on communion, um, on Zoom this morning, may you receive this gift with the words, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And for those with us here on Century Avenue, you are welcome to come forward to receive the wafer of bread and either a small cup of red wine or white grape juice. The empties can go in the baskets at the ends of the aisles. And if you'd like gluten-free, there is a station to my right. God's banquet of grace is prepared, and all are welcome. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Now that our transgressing 
mercy, in pardon and in peace. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you are a God of such incredible abundance. We give you thanks for this bread of life and cup of salvation through which you have united us with Christ and made us one with all your people. Send us forth now in the power of your Holy Spirit that we might proclaim your redeeming love to all the world. We pray this in the name of of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand and sing together our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord, number 574. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I save?
may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. of night I will make their darkness bright who will bear my light to them whom shall I send